and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you my complete workflow in Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro from beginning to the end. This photo was taken on top of the Mount Pilatus in Lucerne, Switzerland and uh, it's the Fuji file so I'll also show you how to use the film simulation uh, the Fuji's own uh, recipe. Normally my workflow goes like that. I, I pick my um, color and then I fix the white balance then I touch exposure. Take a quick look in my uh, histogram if anything is clipping. As you can clearly see um, my highlights are clipping probably in this area. What I do first I will go to the color uh, select my film simulation and the photo was taken at the time, I think in Astia, I will, uh, no, I think it was Velvia at the beginning. Um, I will tone it down a little bit. So I'll select Astia or soft. So that's done. So as you can see that it's clearly toned down the orange a little bit, followed by the white balance. I think the white balance is quite all right. I like that mood. Um, I, I'll see if there's anything that I can change. Probably in the shadow area, I can add a bit of uh, tint, red tint in the shadow area. I can, because here is too blue and bright area is more, uh, more orange. Um, I will do the multi-source, uh, multi-light source compensation. That means that I can balance the two different white balance a little bit. Um, everything else is fine. Uh, I quite like it as it is. I don't need to change it too much. Um, so I've done my color. I've done my white balance. I could actually pick uh, the presets from here, but I don't want to play too much. Um, it reduced my uh, workflow. And now I will fix the, the clipping in this area. So I have a little bit of, sh I think, shadow here. That's this section. I mean, let me show you how that histogram works. So make it the floating window. And then I'll bring it over here. And you can tell that this section is the dark area here. It doesn't have much of a, it's a shadow. And the clipping pad, that's right there. So let's move that on the side. I don't think I don't have to do a much uh, with this photograph except the fact that the brightness, for instance, the color burn adds some, uh, adds some brightness in the shadow area, but it doesn't touch anything here. As you can see the histogram, um, it just uh, ch there is a little bit of change in this section, but didn't do much here. What I can do instead, I can actually go to the HDR and then add a reduce the in shadow and reduce the highlight. You see, it's uh, quite wide balance, but however, mm, I wouldn't mind adding a little bit of contrast here in this section. Uh, it's missing a little bit of black, uh, it's missing a character. So what I go, I go to the black level and pull the slider up a little bit till this section touches the edge to the zero. So I go to the black a bit more, almost we're there. I go perfect, good looking histogram. Uh, but uh, my reds are still clipping in this section. Um, now you have to make a um, creative decision. Like, do you like the way it looks or you want to have a perfect photo? So that's up to you. I was there at the time. Uh, this is how it looked at this very moment. So I can decide to keep it and don't touch anything at all, except uh, probably I can do a bit of cropping. But honestly, uh, it is already good. It's sharp. Mm, if you look at the histogram, uh, the exit file uh, is the base ISO, so I didn't clip 
um, it has uh, is F10, so it's well focused. On it, um, to be honest, um, and it was shot in actually vivid Velvia, so I was right, I was vivid. But now I toned down everything, so it's good to go. What I like to do, um, however, I can add probably a little bit of um, blue color cast using the white balance adjustment. So what it does, um, it gives a nice uh, two different color, more like a split tone. So blue here in the shadow and orange here. Um, that, uh, it gives a good character. Um, I don't have to do any kind of local adjustment at this point. I don't think so. The last thing I would like to have a look, uh, probably I could add a touch uh, clarity. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it, uh, it wasn't very aggressive. Uh, it, it adds a little bit of contrast. Uh, I don't have to use a dehaze because, yeah, it, there is a little bit of cloud, but that's the whole point. I mean, you do have a little bit of the haziness there, but that's the whole character of this landscape photo. photo. Uh, that's how I would like to have my photo. I don't, know how, I don't want to reduce haze. I would like to keep the haze. But if you want to, you could actually put the slider up a little bit and it kind of messes the whole photo up, uh, unnecessary. Uh, only time the DHA slider works if you have a photograph with the complete haze everywhere from the top to the bottom. And then you can uh, play with the haze slider a little bit. But other than that, I would not play too much with it. What I would like to know, do though, I'll probably try to reduce a little bit of um, exposure on that particular area. So I could go and then do some fine tuning there. And then see if there is anything clipping using the highlight and shadow warning. I could do individually, but I'd like to see both. As you can see, um, in this section, you do have a little bit of color clipping. So the brightness are all right, but the reds are clipping. So it's showing the opposite of red, which is blue. Mm, my shadows are all right. Uh, there's a touch uh, here and there, a bit of a, um, uh, shadow clipping, but that's um, ignorable. You don't have to uh, fix all of them. You don't need a perfect photo. You need a good, beautiful photograph. So to fix um, the blue, I can go to the color wheel and point my uh, cursor there, and then you can tell that's there actually. And then you turn back on the highlight warning. And then reduce, go to the orange, see what happens. Don't do much. And uh, reduce the saturation a little bit. Uh, see what it does. And then maybe a touch brightness. I see it took off uh, quite a lot of um, quite a lot of uh, clipping there, but uh, don't go too far because you need them sometime. You need to have um, a bit of a character there. You cannot have a flat photo because if it's a flat photo, then it doesn't look very good, um, and that's not nice. You need some punch in your photograph. Um, to wrap it up, what I can do, I can add some um, saturation. And honestly, guys, that's about it. I guess that should do the job. Mm, I would like to see the sharpness. Um, the photo is already sharp, but I would like to verify. So if I zoom in about 50%, as you can see, yeah, it has a nice, beautiful edge. Uh, it's a beautiful photograph. I personally really, really love it. What I could do, I could actually crop the photo just about there like that um, but you know uh, if I uh, let's leave it for future but what I could do I could crop just a little bit I could go to the crop 
and maybe take off a little take off a little bit of, maybe uh, make it like a four three but almost like a square ish so that it's not really completely a square photo and now let's take it off a little bit from the top and that's it I think I think oops I think that should do let's see how it looks like What I could do, I can use my full screen mode and then see. I mean, that's nice. That's really nice. Finally, I don't need to do any kind of noise reduction, so I can leave it as it is. Uh, sharpening, um, if I do 100, I just, we checked earlier uh, to have a quick look with the sharpening and it looks all right, but what I could do, uh, the, by default, is giving you already a brilliant job um maybe i can not add a touch more sharpening there that's enough that's more than enough uh, i don't want to play too much with the sharpening to re end it end this editing what i could do i could uh, add a hundred percent the mosaic sharpening what it does actually it gives you really good and clean photo is nothing to do with the actual sharpening uh, there that's the input sharpening and this is um, creative sharpening and then when you actually export you can add um, sharpening based on whether you want to print your photo or you this is, or, or your photograph is only to post in Instagram or Facebook so that's the last step and at this point I'm going to just um, export it as it is I'm not going to add any more um, sharpening so to export um, in silky pix developer studio pro all you have to do you can click uh, this button here is called develop uh, and then find your location may I will add extra that's my that's my default but I can change it to export that's my external hard drive and you change you can change your uh, name uh, of the file uh, I can add Still, key picks. Tutorial. And now you can you can export it as JPEG or TIFF. Or if you want to do any further change, you can go to the settings, and then select either file output default or you can export the highest quality JPEG uh, let's uh, I'm, I'm going to do that now and then um, also you can add unsharp mask you have some preset you whether you want to add original or you want to uh, post it for web or for printing let's say I add web it gives you some presets. Um, you can zoom in, zoom in or out. I think. For instance, I can check exactly what's the sharpening doing. It looks all right to me. And you can add watermark. Of course, you can add your logo. You can uh, add your file information. I'm going to go with the file information uh, right there. And now, develop. So now it's exporting. Let's take a quick look how the photo looks like. So the, the photo looks uh, beautiful. So I can take this one off. As you can see, the, it shows the name of the file, um, gives you all the information at the bottom. 
and the date and the time what time it was taken and if I zoom uh, 100% it's good it's sharp it has a nice color but obviously if you have any other ideas obviously you can play with all the all the um, buttons uh, personally I don't like to play too much um, with the sliders because um, that's kind of counterproductive however though if you like to turn this photograph into black and white what you can do you can do the same thing that I've done before you can go to the color film simulation and then you have the Fuji preset monochrome Safia, Acros uh, and then you do exactly the same however be careful bear in mind when you change the color you can you might affect the exposure again so as you can tell now it's actually too dark so you can add some brightness the zero looks good there so the dark side is all right but the bright side um, is not that much so you can add some bit more bit more exposure all right so that looks good Maybe I like my black and white a bit more contrasty, so I can add a bit more, just uh, just uh, just a bit more, bit more contrast there. That being said, again, I lost uh, I lost the blacks, so I can go back and then add some black. And that's it. Um, let's have a look uh, in full screen and then zoom in that looks beautiful this one however I like that particular area there so between this section so I can crop it in a little bit so I can go to the crop full screen wow look at that so that's it I mean that's how easy it is then you can do the same thing uh, go to the develop Lucerne silky Peaks developer studio pro silky Peaks tutorial black and white and that's it now let's take a look right so that's the black that's the black and white version of the same photo I, I think the next one is the color version of it so each of each for their own um, I like both I probably going to keep both and let me know how the tutorial worked for you thank you so much for watching